All right, tell them. Hopefully this is my last video for tonight. Um, we're gonna look at how the New Jerusalem is the bride of Messiah and how the bride of Messiah, well, the New Jerusalem consists of 144 cubits, which represents 144,000. And as you, if you've seen my other videos regarding, so you wanna be the bride, um, you will understand that uh, the New Jerusalem is um, consists of the 144,000 that are mentioned throughout the book of Revelation and that um, the 144,000 is the bride of Messiah, okay? Based on the scriptural study, okay? I'm using scriptures. I'm not adding things to, if you go back in that study, you will see I'm not adding stuff, all right? I don't care what anybody else teaches. We teach the word of Yah. And we use it with scripture and we verify it in the Old Testament, uh, which is called the Tanakh, as well as the New Testament, which is called the Brit Kaddishah, um, to verify those things, to test the scriptures, to be good Bereans, because there are a lot of teachings out there. And I've always felt that the entire Bride of Messiah, I mean, the, pride, the entire Bride of Messiah is the bride, um, but yet um, the bride is taken from the body of Messiah. So, um, and I, I talk about that in those videos. So if you have not listened to those videos, please take the time to go back to those videos. I go through a lot of scriptures and I'm going to go through some more. So this is a little bit different from the last one. Okay, I've already established that the bride of Messiah being the new Jerusalem is the 144,000. Okay, I'm going to verify that even more with um, um, some other chapters in the book of Revelation, as well as in the prophets. So let's dive in. Heavenly Father, I pray you be glorified in this teaching. Let us have a teachable spirit to learn and grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth. Heavenly Father, we know that what we're taught in the, in the, in the churches, but your word remains true. And we pray, Heavenly Father, as we read your word, let us continue to grow in the grace as we need to. Um, I pray that as I teach this teaching, be with my mouth, be with my mind. May I speak truth in love. May no error come forth from my mouth. May I teach only your word. And may those who are listening be good Bereans and test all things to see if they are true and to ask you and allow you to Verify those things by your word and by your spirit. I pray all these things in Yehoshua's name that we do not have any distraction or delay during this teaching. In Yehoshua's name, I mean. Okay, so let's start with Revelations chapter 21. I think we should just start there, all right? Okay, I'm laying the foundation. We're going to go Revelation chapter 21. All right, I'm going to start at verse 1. Uh, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, Yochanan, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Elohim out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Elohim is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Elohim himself will be with them and be their Elohim. Okay, you hear that often throughout the New Testament, I mean, not the New Testament, the Old, okay, the Old, what they call Old Testament. Um, you hear that a lot when Yah is talking to the, the children of Israel, you know, you will be my people, you will be my people, okay. This covenant they made on Mount Sinai, which was pretty much a, 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 a marriage covenant, that was made before Yah back then. And you can see the Ten Commandments is part of that marital covenant um, that was made with Israel back then. But but unfortunately, um, Israel became a harlot wife. And so, you know, um, now we're back to where the church is becoming a harlot bride. And... Um, you have to be a pure bride in order to be qualified as a bride. Okay. You have to turn from being a harlot to being a pure bride. Okay. Continuing on verse four and Elohim white shall wipe away all tears from their eyes 
and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne, behold, I make all things new, new. And he said unto me, write that these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Aleph Tau. Okay. I know usually in your Bibles you see Alpha and Omega, but, you know, Yehoshua spoke Hebrew and Aramaic and the letters for the Hebrew, the beginning of the Hebrew alphabet is Aleph. The ending of the Hebrew alphabet is Tau or that we call the T, looks like a cross, okay? That means a covenant keeper, covenant. Tao represents the covenant, all right? And he said unto me, it is done. I am Aleph and Tao, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things. I will be his Elohim and he shall be my son. But the fearful, unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, whoremongers, so yes, the whoremongers, okay, sorcerers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, okay. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me. Okay, remember that angel actually had that golden um, girdle thing I mentioned in my video, um, Odun Ayo, okay, that, that one, the most recent one where I was wearing my white deep seats dress with that um, golden, what was this pretty much across the chest area. Okay, that's one of those angels. Okay, and this one is saying, he talked with me. Well, it didn't say he, I'm just going to, sorry. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which the um, seven vowels full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, come hither, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Okay, and he carried me away in the rock to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from Elohim, having the glory of Elohim and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Okay. The light was like unto a stone most precious, clear as crystal. The light was clear. Okay. And had a, verse 12, and had a high, great, I mean, great high, let me read a King James style, okay? Verse 12, and had a wall, great and high, and had 12 gates. At the 12 gates, 12 angels, and the names written thereon, <coughs> which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Ooh, the, the, the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel are still there in the new heaven, new earth, in the new Jerusalem. Hmm, Okay. Okay, we see 12 tribes of the children of Israel still mentioned, okay? So everybody has to be grafted into one of these 12 tribes, okay? Whether you're native-born, biologically of Israel, or grafted in as a Gentile, you're still going to be grafted into Israel, okay? So when he made a new covenant, okay, he wants to take Israel, okay, because pretty much the church is Israel, and he wants to take her from being a harlot bride, Okay, because she 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 was a harlot, right? And to be renewed, to be a pure bride. Okay, it's all about restoration. All right, verse 13. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. On the west, three gates. Okay, and the wall of the city had 12 foundations. Okay, it tells you who those 12 foundations are, obviously. And in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So these 12 foundations that make up the New Jerusalem, okay? Because they lay the foundation of preaching the gospel. Remember, after um, Yehoshua's, Yeshua's death, resurrection, and ascension, they laid the foundation in which the bride would be built, okay? Would come out of the body, 
They laid the foundation. So they are the foundation. Okay, that's verse 14 I read. Um, but it's talking about the wall of the city. Now, I want you to pay attention to verse 14. It's talking about the wall of the city. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And in them, the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Verse 15. And he taught with me. I mean, he that taught with me had a golden reed to measure the city. Okay, so a golden reed in his hand. The gates thereof and the wall thereof. Okay, so the gates and the wall. The gates is where people come in to the city. Okay, the wall is what actually makes up the city. Okay, if you don't have a wall, because most cities back in ancient time were walled. If you didn't have a wall or, you know, to make up the city, you didn't have a city. All right. Um, verse 16, pay careful attention to this, these next few verses. And the city lies four square. So four square. Okay, so you got one, two, three, four. So it's like a square, four square. And the length is as large as the breadth. So the length and the width is just as high. Okay, the, the, the length, the width, and the height are all the same. Okay, I'll keep reading. Um, I'll go back to the beginning of that. And the city lies four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000, yes, 12,000 furloughs. Okay, so he measured, I think, just one length, right? 12,000 furloughs. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furloughs. The length, the breadth, and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall. Okay. I want you to pay attention to this. The wall. And verse 17. And he measured the wall. The wall thereof. 144 cubits. According to the measure of what? A man. A human being. Okay. A man. That is of the angel. Okay, I'll go into detail about what that means. Verse 18, and the building of the wall of it is of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. Okay, then it continues on about the foundation and about the gates. Okay, and remember it says here that uh, they saw no temple therein. For Yahuwah, this is verse 22, I'm sorry. I saw no temple therein, for Yahuwah Elohim Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. I'll read again. And I saw no temple therein, this is verse 22, for Yahuwah Elohim Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Okay? So, the bride, if you could consider, you know, the wall makes up the city. Okay? And... You know, the temple, there's no temple because the temple is actually Elohim himself, okay, and the Lamb. All right. And verse 23 And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of Elohim didn't light did for the glory of Elohim did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Okay, the Lamb is the light. Yeshua is the light of that city. Okay. He is the light of that city and the nations of them. So there's nations, the nations of them, which were saved shall walk in the light of it. They shall walk in Yehoshua and the Kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. So people, there's visitors that come in. Okay. The Kings of the earth. Okay. So this is the city that comes down onto the new earth. Okay. So there's still people on the, this new earth and they can come into the city. All right. But I'm, I'm focusing on what the city is actually consists of, okay? The foundation, the gates, and the wall. The wall makes up the city. And the wall is 144 cubits, represents 144,000. Um, and I showed that in my other videos, so please take the time to look back at that. I'm just focusing on Revelation chapter 21 in this case. Um, let's see, continuing on. And the gates of a... The, the gates of verse 25 and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day for there should be no night therein and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it 
and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defiles or anything that works abomination or makes a lie for they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Okay, so the bride is the new Jerusalem, but you it, hopefully you paid attention to the fact that um, people, other people are still coming in who are not of the bride of Messiah. They'll, they'll, they'll be able to come into the, the city, all right? Those whose names are written in the Lamb Book of Life. And as I mentioned before um, in my other video. So pay attention to that, okay? All right? Okay, so now let's go to, because I laid that foundation about the wall. Let's go to Song of Solomon. Okay, turn to Song of Solomon with me. I'm going to be reading from Song of Solomon chapter 8. Let's see. I think it's uh, verse 8. Let's start at verse 8, okay? So I'm trying to establish that the wall represents the bride of Messiah, okay? This new Jerusalem represents the bride of Messiah, and that the wall is the 144 cubits is that representation of the 144,000, which the bride of Messiah consists of, okay? As I talked in my previous videos. Verse 8 of chapter 8 of Song of Solomon reads, We have a little sister, and she has no breast. What shall we do for her, our sister, in the day when she shall be spoken for? Verse 9. If she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver. Okay. And if she be a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. Verse 10. I am a wall, and my breast like towers. Then was I in his eyes as one that found favor. Okay. Now, obviously, if you read the Song of Solomon, you know this is talking about the essentially the beloved and his beloved. All right. Okay. Which in this case is actually representing the bride and the bridegroom. Okay. So this is analogous to the bride and Yehoshua, the bridegroom. Okay. So the, the bride is declaring herself the Shulamit woman, the woman of peace. That's what it means in Hebrew, Shulamit. The woman of peace um, means um, is the bride. Okay, she's declaring to the daughters of Jerusalem that she is a wall. She is a wall. All right? She is a wall. And we read in Revelation chapter um, 21, how the new Jerusalem, it doesn't, descri it doesn't describe it as walls. It describes the wall of that makes up the new Jerusalem as just the wall. Okay, so it's being consistent to identify that this is the bride of Messiah that he's talking about. She's declaring herself in Solomon, Song of Solomon chapter 8, verse 10, that she is a wall. Okay, this shows you that the, the new Jerusalem, that this wall that this new Jerusalem is referring to, okay, is the bride of Messiah. All right, I want to further show you that both the bride of Messiah and Messiah reign together. All right. Um, let's go to Jeremiah. Hold on, I'm going to check one thing. We're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 6. And um, Jeremiah chapter... 33 verse 16. Okay. Let me hold on. A silver. I'm trying to look up the word silver because when they said that she is, I'm trying to see if I can find what the Hebrew word. Um, I'm since I've been taking Hebrew classes, the Hebrew always disclosed more than what our English language can say. Believe me. Um, I did a Hebrew study. Um, on some words back in um, about, like I told you about, I think Deuteronomy chapter 33. And you'll be amazed to find out in that, that um, the Hebrew says a lot more, that there's going to be more covenants being made in the future. Okay, what the covenant we have now is just another, you know, he's a covenant maker. He's always been making covenants. He made a covenant with, with Noah. He made a covenant with Abraham. He made a covenant with Isaac. He made a covenant with Jacob. Okay. We got to understand that the Elohim we serve, he's a covenant maker. Okay. In the Hebrew language, 
every single person he's made a covenant with, even with Adam, he made a covenant with Adam, will always in front of their names. And it's amazing. You can only see this in the Hebrew. So when you're reading the Hebrew, you only see it in the Hebrew. You will never see it in your English Bibles. Okay. This is why knowing the language, learning the language is so vitally important, important because you will not get this um, if you, um, <clears throat> hold on. You will not get this if you don't um, study the Hebrew. The Hebrew is so, so critically important. Um, I can't overemphasize it. You, you'll learn so much more. Um, don't assume that the English language is going to clarify things in the scriptures. You have to go back to the original language to really understand. Um, and so, <clears throat> anyway... Um, hold on, I'm trying to pull up Song of Solomon here. Chapter 8, verse 8. Sorry, this is the reason why I'm trying to pull this up. Okay, hold on. Verse 9, hold on, verse 9. Oh, right. I'm trying to look at verse 9 here. Hold on. Hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> um, I'll read the two verses that I'm mentioning. Ah, Kasef, Kasef. She will we'll build up a, a pillar of um, Kasef. Yeah, this is one of the Hebrew words, one of my Hebrew definitions. Okay, that means money, silver. Okay, silver. Make her a palace of money <laughs> or a palace of silver, in this case, a palace of silver. Okay, Kasef. Kasaf and the word kasaf, kasef. Yeah, that's one of our Hebrew dic uh, definition. Um, I'm not dictionary. One of the words that we're learning in our Hebrew class. Okay, it does mean silver, like money. Okay, she will be wealthy, a palace of wealth. Okay, so really, um, I think it's referring to, yeah, Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 9, when it says, If she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver. So it's talking about um, a palace of wealth. She'll be very wealthy. Uh, you know, silver is very bright and shiny. So she'll be a bright, shiny, wealthy palace. So if you take that Hebrew language and you really expound upon it, you, sh you should get that type of understanding. Okay. Um, now let's look at the last portion where it shows about the bride and the bride of Messiah. Um, um, yeah, the bridegroom and the bride of uh, Messiah um, ruling and reigning together. And it's actually coded in Deuteronomy, I mean, not in Deuteronomy, in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 6, and Jeremiah chapter 33. So let's turn to that. Part of me, if I seem a little bit slow tonight, is just I have been doing a lot of Hebrew word studies of scripture. And I, it's, it's been, I, I do it at night when everybody's asleep and so sometimes i just i get carried away with it because it's so the hebrew is such a rich deep language and you know to assume things without studying is it's really foolishness on our part okay um let's look at jeremiah chapter 23 verse 6 um i'm gonna start at verse 5 above and then we're gonna read it from there okay so it reads Behold, the days come, says Yahuwah, that I will raise unto Dawid a branch, a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Verse 6, in his days, Yehuda shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called Yahuwah, our righteousness. Or Yahuwah, um, I think Zidkei, 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 sorry, Zidkei, ooh, Zidkeinu. Okay, if I can just talk tonight, yeah, help me. All right. So you notice there. Okay, I wrote down here um, that verse five talks about how he will execute judgment and justice in the earth. Okay, in the whole entire earth. Yehuda will be saved and Israel. Okay. This is King Yehoshua, Yeshua, 
bearing his own name, the name of the heavenly father, Yahuwah. He will rule over all the kingdom of Israel on the earth. Now, let's look at Yermiyahu chapter 33, verse 16. Okay, so turn just a few chapters over. Let's start at verse 15 for the sake of it. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 15 reads, In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto Dawid, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. Okay, I'm going to read it again. Um, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 15. In those days and at that time, I will cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto Dawid, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Yehuda be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. Now notice it's focusing on the city this time. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called Yahuwah, our righteousness. Okay. Now notice here that um, in this case, this is really referring to, you know, Jerusalem, the city dwelling safely. This is referring to the bride of Messiah. This is Jehoshua's bride, Yeshua's bride, bearing his name and his father's name, which is Yahuwah, our righteousness. Okay, um, you can see that in Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. Let's go ahead and um, look at that. And she shall rule over Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. So both Yehoshua and his bride shall execute judgments. However, Yehoshua will execute also justice while his bride executes righteousness from Jerusalem. All right. So let's go to Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. I forgot about that last particular bit. This is how to clarify that 144,000 are the bride of Messiah, bearing the name of Yehoshua and his father's name. Okay. Chapter 14, verse 1 reads in Revelation, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his name and his father's name written in their foreheads. Remember, I mentioned in my previous video about the bride that the bride takes on the name of her husband, all right? Even in our natural world, our natural realm, the bride takes on the name, typically, historically, takes on the name of her husband and her his father's name, obviously, because he has his father's name, you know. And uh, this is showing that this is the bride, because the bride takes on the name of Yehoshua, and his, and, and his father, okay, which is Yahuwah, our righteousness, which we see in Revelation, I mean, not Revelation, which we see in Yermiyahu, Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 16. She also bears the name of his name, Yehoshua, and his father's name, which is Yahuwah, our righteousness. So the 144,000 will bear this name in their foreheads, which is Yahuwah, our righteousness. It doesn't say anybody else is bearing that name, okay? Because remember when it talks about the characteristics of the bride of Messiah, verse 4 in chapter 14, verse 4 says, these were they which were not defiled with women. Okay, the, the main woman we're talking about, as I've been mentioning like crazy, is Jezebel, okay? The one who teaches the body of Messiah to pretty much be a harlot. Um, that is one of the women, the 144,000. Uh, will not um, are not defiled with that particular woman. They've made themselves clean. The bride has made herself ready. The bride has gotten rid of Jezebel out of their lives. All right. And um, yeah. <laughs> so I hope that was edifying a little bit more um, regarding how the New Jerusalem is the bride of Messiah and how the bride of Messiah, based on the dimensions of the New Jerusalem, is the 144,000. And 
Revelation chapter 14, verse 1 backs that up. All right. So if um I think um Stephen of Disciple of Yah, he mentions about Revelation chapter 14. He does a really good job breaking down the actual language in Greek. You should listen to his video. Uh, he talks about the, I think it's 144,000 prophetic word part three. He shows you based on what the Holy Spirit was teaching him, how the bride of Messiah is 144,000, which they make up the new Jerusalem and how they're not defiled with Jezebel. They get cleansed from Jezebel. And so they are virgins, spiritual virgins before Yah. Because like I said, this, that spirit of Jezebel is rampant throughout the church. Okay. His job is to keep the bride of Messiah impure so that she is not ready when Yehoshua returns as um, my beloved brother, Messiah, uh, as I say, BG mentioned. Hoda um, Rabbah, thank you so much. And um, if you have any other questions, please put it in the comments. <clears throat> and um, that's it. Have a blessed, blessed day, morning, noon, and night. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll see you later.